Hey, Andrew here from The Investor's Way and welcome to Woody's Weekly Wisdom, episode number 75. And today we're going to talk wages. So if you've been playing along at home, there's been a lot of talk about interest rates and inflation and interest rates and more inflation and cost of living. And it may have felt a little bit boring. Well, today we're going to talk about the third piece of the puzzle and that is uh, wages. So um, stick with me to hear about what's been happening in the world of wages. And uh, before I dive in, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a huge favor, hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified when new uh, videos drop. And that way you'll be first to know. And if you're watching on Facebook or LinkedIn, hit that little um, um, like button, leave us a comment or even just a thumbs up. And if you really want to help us out, hit that share button and uh, let more people see what's going on in the world of money and investing and the economy. And today, like I said, we're looking at uh, this uh, story here, Aussie's $103 billion pay packet for one month. Sounds pretty uh, exciting. Uh, Not sure about you, but I didn't see $103 billion come into my account this month. But uh, that's not what they're talking about, obviously. Uh, the, new, the new headline when we come across to uh, the actual story, Australian wages pass historic figure. So what this uh, story is all about is that in the month of uh, September 2024, uh, Australians earned collectively uh, over, well, yeah, over $103 billion dollars in wages and salaries. And that is a 3.9% or $3.9 billion uh, increase from August, which is uh, quite phenomenal. And September just happens to be uh, one of those months where a lot of uh, corporate bonuses are paid. So it's, it is 10 or does tend to be one of our largest months. But how does that compare to previous years? Well, here it is, it compares with 97.5 billion uh, 12 months ago and 90.9 billion two years ago. So, you know, quite strong uplift in uh, the amount of um, money that Australians have earned in the month of September 2024. Why is that relevant? Well, as I said, if you've been playing along at home, you will know that uh, one of the things that has been a concern when it comes to uh, interest rates and inflation has been wages growth. Now, this is where this number is potentially, um, you know, susceptible to being misunderstood. Uh, This is saying that we've earned a whole lot more, but it doesn't necessarily say that that's become a result of increasing people's actual Uh, wages or hourly rates. And that was the thing that was uh, concerning the RBA was that as cost of living pressures increased, employees would be going to their employer saying, well, yeah, if you want me to stay, uh, I'm going to need to be paid more because I can't keep up with the cost of living at the current level that you're paying me. And that would spiral into this uh, wages growth, which would fuel more inflation, which would fuel uh, more pressure on interest rates. But what this story is talking about uh, is that the total wages have risen uh, over the two years. We've talked about that, that it's come across uh, all 19 industries um, compared to uh, August, September 24. Uh, But like I said, it hasn't come from people asking for higher wages, it's come from more employment. And that's, as always, a double-edged sword. Um, So it does talk here, let's get a little bit of detail. Everybody loves a bit of detail. Six industries accounted for three-fifths or 2.3 billion of the rise in total wages. Um, The hospitality industry experienced the lowest annual growth, rising to 2.8% over the last year. Um, the lower annual growth to September 24 in the accommodation and food and services industry reflects weaker economic conditions. And that's where this story starts to you know, paint a picture. So what we're seeing is the, you know, the global economies are a little bit weaker. So therefore, tourism is not as strong. 
Um, we, uh, and, and this, one of the issues, we're just focusing on one article in these weekly wisdoms, which I want to do because otherwise we could be talking for hours. But one of the things that is not talked about in this uh, story is that uh, we actually saw in earlier uh, reporting this week that everybody other than the boomers has tightened their belt when it comes to their spending. And in fact, some of the, the younger generations have you know, dropped their spending dramatically as a result of these cost of living pressures that we've all been experiencing. And so that has led to um, weakness in uh, the, I guess, the um, accommodation and tourism and um, restaurant uh, industries because people have tightened their belts other than the boomers. Uh, and so that has meant that there hasn't been that fear or that risk of wage growth coming from people wanting more dollars for the time they're spending. This wage growth that we're seeing has come from more hours being worked, more people have got uh, employment. And as you can see there with the employment rate at 4.1 down from the COVID peak, uh, but you know, heading towards you know, a fairly traditional level of what is almost considered full employment. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit away from full employment, but still looking reasonably strong and indicating that it's not wages pressure, it's more hours being worked and therefore more dollars being earned. And this is where the story kind of deviates away to start talking about uh, that more and more Australians are looking for uh, a second job uh, to help them manage the cost of living pressures rather than going to their current employer and asking for a, a, a wage rise. And they're probably doing that because they know the answer is going to be very difficult to get a yes. So rather than bother themselves with having that conversation, they're just going and getting second jobs. And this then starts to talk about through you know, Robert Half, the recruitment companies, talking about how um, that second job is going to create other problems for the economy. And that's where people start to have uh, burnout and uh, and all the pressures that that will lead to. So this this story, like in a way, uh, if we come back to the you know the main uh, crux of the of the story is that um, we've still got these cost of living pressures. Interest rates are still high. And again, if I refer to some of the noise we're hearing out of the RBA is that they're still not thinking cuts. And in fact, there is even some talk this week that they're thinking another in increase in rates, which seems uh, bewildering and hard to believe with everything else that's going on in the world. Uh, but uh, the RBA has still got a little part of their eye on increases rather than decreases in interest rates. And it's just, I guess, because there's that stubbornness in the inflation number and uh, they really do want to see that come down. And you know, they've got all those um, excuses as to why that's the case. And if you want to hear me talk about any of those, have a look at some of the previous Weekly Wisdom videos where we do talk about uh, those um, signs that the RBA is looking at in relation to you know, the cost of living and inflation. But this story for me is a little bit of good news. And that's why I wanted to talk about it because it is telling us that uh, the, the wage growth has come from people working more, not seeking more. And while that's a, you know, a, a, a subtle distinction, it's a imp really important one when it comes to that cost of, uh, cost of living and interest rate conversation. So hopefully, as per normal, we will see more data come out that supports that mentality and that uh, result, which will then ultimately force the RBA to reduce rates. We've seen in the US, they've had two cuts, two significant cuts in recent times. And so um, there is, uh, I guess, impetus around the globe to regenerate uh, spending and, cap and, and economic growth. And we're coming into an election cycle here in Australia. The US has obviously just been through one. And so with our election cycle, you know, the RBA is going to be watching very, very closely you know, all parties involved in that election cycle to see what promises they're making in terms of spending, 
tax cuts, anything that might influence uh, cost of living or inflation, they're going to be looking at those very, very closely because ultimately they want to let the current scenario play out without any government interference to uh, enable them to make a decision on interest rates. And the reason I say government interference is one of the reasons that they're not reducing rates at the moment is because of you know, the electricity uh, rebates that are currently in the market that the government put out. Uh, and so they are indicating that that's a false narrative when it comes to the cost of living coming down because you've got those uh, rebates. Uh, so that will be a hot topic in the election cycle, whether or not they will be continued or not. Uh, and yeah, the RBA will be looking very, very closely at uh, promises made to see what impact they have on the cost of living and inflation. So having said all of that, there is some good news here. Wages you know, rising in terms of dollars, but not necessarily in terms of pressure. And that is a good thing when it comes to the possibility of seeing some interest rate cuts down the track. So as always, continue on your investing journey month after month, get your dollars invested. Um, and if you want more information on how to do that, and you haven't spoken to us, reach out. We'd love to have a chat and see if we can help you with your investing journey. And as I said earlier, um, do us a favor, hit the like, comment and share buttons or the subscribe button so that we can share this information with more people. Have a great week. That is week, Woody's Weekly Wisdom, episode number 75. And we'll be back next week for another episode and hopefully some more good news. Have a great week. Cheers.